Hello game developers and welcome back. I hope you're sitting comfortably because today we're going to be covering something very important. We're going to be looking at the concept of finite state machines and how you can use them in Game Maker to do lots of awesome exciting things. Now finite state machine is a very complex sounding term. It's actually not really that complicated of a thing, although it is quite difficult to kind of explain. Um, it's actually really not all that complex of a concept. Um, really, all it is is just using the idea of uh, an object being in a given state and being able to change its state in order to control how your game works. It's really, in terms of how we're going to be using it in Game Maker, all you really have to think of it is it's a way of organizing your code in a way that makes making much more complex games much more manageable and possible to do. So let's take a look at an example of, say, a platform game that doesn't use state machines. Here I've set up a platform game just using the same sort of code that um, we've used in like my previous tutorials if you followed along with any of my platforming stuff. How it works, we have a player object who's established just a couple of little variables and then has this step event. Okay, So it has, he gets, uh, the player gets all the inputs at the start of a frame. We perform some calculations based on those inputs on where we want to move. And then we check to see if there's going to be a collision in the place that we want to move and we move towards that place. If there is, and we move as close as possible to the wall and stop if the if we're about to collide with something. Okay, simple like 30 lines of code, and it's manageable while our game is that simple. But now say that we want to add ladders into the game. Okay, so I've set up these ladders around here. Now, normally what we would do in that situation is change this code to something more like this code. Okay, so what I've done in this code is I've created a new variable called ladder that checks whether or not we're on a ladder. And if we're not on a ladder, then we do our regular movement. And if we are on a ladder, then we do a specific type of movement, like going just going up and down and checking to see whether or not we press a key to detach from the ladder and so on and so forth. And if we're not on a ladder, we check to see if we're touching a ladder. And if we are touching a ladder and pressing up, then we attach to the ladder. Now, this is an okay way of doing things while you've got a very small number of kind of mechanics going on in your game. You've like, if I just wanted a platform with just ladders, and then this would be fine, and there's not really any problem in doing this. However, if I wanted to start doing more and more complex things, say I had ropes that I wanted to swing off of, or like NPCs to talk to, or different kind of states, you might see where I'm going with this, that uh, my player needs to be in at any given time, it gets more and more complex and more and more unmanageable to write code just using like the odd variable to check whether or not you're doing something because then you have to wrap everything you do in different if statements. Already here I have to wrap all of my movement code uh, my normal movement code into this if statement to check to see whether or not we're on a ladder and if we're not on a ladder then do this and all of the rest of the code still gets run regardless and so if anything in let's say my collision needed to change based on whether or not I was on a ladder I would have to wrap that in an if statement as well and so on and so forth and it gets really really complex and unmanageable as you start to wrap more and more things if if not on a ladder if not talking to NPC if this if that if the other you know what I mean the problem is we're only looking at our players logic as being a single step event, okay? This single event, uh, and this single big chunk of code that's executed every single frame of the game. So whenever we want to do anything, we're always checking against every other possibility and possible kind of state that our player might be in. What we want to do, instead of having just this one step event that contains all of the possibilities for this character and has to juggle between all of these different if statements just based on what our character is doing at any given time, what we want to do is divide that into different states that our player can be in at any given time. And then when each frame comes around, instead of running one huge chain of logic, we run one specific chain of logic depending on what state our character is currently in. You can have states for everything, so you can have states for uh, talking to an NPC for being in the air as opposed to being on the ground, for swimming, for climbing, for anything you can really imagine. And what this does is it means that 
we own we get to choose specifically what code is run where without having to divide everything into lots of different if statements and then when all we need to do is define the conditions for changing between those states inside the states themselves. If that explanation made no sense whatsoever, let's take a look at what this exact game, our little dude running around climbing on ladders, would look like if it used a state machine. So what I have here is a copy of the exact same game, um, just has a little dude, can run around, can climb on, climb on ladders, only this time we're using a state machine. And instead of having a single step event, I've divided this, uh, all the code that would go into this step event into a number of different scripts. But how do I decide which script to call? Well, when I initialize the game in the first place in room zero, just stuck it in the creation code, I created an enumerator for states. Now, if you've never used an enumerator before, what an enumerator is is essentially just another way of creating um, a constant variable, a variable that will never change, uh, but giving it a more English readable name. That's really all that they're there for. So I've created one called states and what that means is I can refer to states.normal and that will always equal I think 0 or I think 1. It doesn't really matter, just a number that's different from states.ladder as I've defined here, which would be I think 2 in this circumstance. It doesn't really matter, the number's not relevant. The fact is that it's just a different number that's given a different name. Um, by doing that, that just allows me to refer to, instead of just having to set state equal 1 or state equal 2, I can say state equal states dot normal or state equal states dot ladder, just so it's more readable to me and I don't have to remember what number is what state. So after creating that enumerator, I've gone into the player object and in the create event, I set my state to be state equals states dot normal. Now, in the step event for the player, where we would normally run all of our like, our huge chain of logic that would just be like, oh, first of all, getting our inputs, then checking all of our movement, and checking oh, whether or not we're on a ladder, and, and so on and so forth, and then doing collision, blah 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 What I do is I run a single state, uh, a single switch statement based on our current state. Now, our state is set to states normal, so... By default, it'll run this first case, which is case states.normal. It'll run this script, script player underscore normal. Great. And if our state is ladder, it'll run this script instead. S oops. SCR underscore player underscore ladder. So what actually exists in those states, uh, in those scripts even, sorry. If I, if I go into SCR underscore player underscore normal, this is what happens. I've even divided uh, the inputs into separate scripts as well, and the collision section, which means that we can decide in these states whether or not we actually want to call collision, or whether or not we even need to get the player's input in the first place, without having to just copy and paste huge chunks of code around, we can just call the script or not. So if we go into scr underscore get inputs, you can see it's just that thing that was at the top of our step event before, get inputs, key left equal keyboard check left, and so on and so forth, all just called at the start of scr underscore player underscore normal. So this is like our standard step event. This is basically everything that would happen normally in our step event without any of the ladder stuff, okay? Does all of our normal movement stuff, but then importantly, oh, and also it does all of our collision stuff at the end, just like how it normally would. But importantly, in the middle here, it does this thing where it says, oh, if I'm colliding with a ladder and I'm pressing up or down, then set my HSP and VSP to zero, set my speeds to be zero, and then set state to equal states dot ladder. Okay? And then it'll do all its collision and everything like that. But then the next time around the uh, the step event happens, it's gonna come back into here, run this, run this switch again, and then this time it's gonna run SCR underscore player underscore ladder. Meaning it's gonna skip all of the stuff from the previous step event. It's gonna ignore all of it, and it's just going to go straight to SCR underscore play underscore ladder. Now this is just a different version of our step event, so basically I'm just sending the player to a different step event. Instead of just having one, we've just divided it into multiples that can happen depending on what state we're in. And in this one I'm getting our inputs again, but this time I'm ignoring all the movement calculation stuff from before, and I don't have to wrap it in an if statement or anything like that, because we already know that we're on a ladder, because we're in the ladder state. So I do the movement that's only moving us up and down, ignore any ability to move left and right, because you can't move left or right on a ladder, right? And then just said, oh, if key jump, or if I'm not touching the ladder anymore because I've climbed off the top, 
set our speeds to be zero again, and set state back to state.normal. So I have a way to transition between both states very easily. And then when I'm back in states normal, it runs our normal step event again. And of course at the bottom I run our collision code, which I've just bundled into a script rather than just have in copied and pasted into each one, since I know it's going to be the same in most states. Okay. Now this results in exactly the same kind of game that we would have if we coded it how we used to, how I've coded it in all my platformer tutorials. But by using a state machine, suddenly we have a ton more power and a ton more freedom in terms of how we're organizing our code uh, to be able to do all different kinds of complex states and much more easily and much more manageably without running into loads of problems like having to double check everything like, oh, if this and if that and if the other. Because all of that stuff is handled by the fact that when we're in the ladder event, we only have to worry about everything the player needs to know when they're on a ladder, which is that they can move up and down, right? They don't need to do it. They don't even need to register the left and right arrow keys because they they don't they don't mean anything, you know. And I don't have to like wrap the section that controls horizontal movement in a oh don't do this if you're on a ladder because we don't need to. We're already in that step event, okay? Now, this isn't just relevant to platform games, this is relevant to basically any kind of game you can create, okay? You can have states for your different enemies, okay? And this is why I'm covering this tutorial, so I can go into platformer AI and doing enemy AI stuff, okay? Is that you can create enemies that are like have an alert state or an aggro state or like are idle or are walking around and stuff like that. Basically anything you can imagine that, uh, any object you can imagine that has complex behavior based on like Oh, being in a different state or being in a different conditions, you can apply this technique and it's a really, really solid way of organizing your code and basically will empower you to be able to make much more complex um, games without your code just becoming a totally unmanageable mess. There you have it, I hope that made any kind of sense. That's how you use state machines in Game Maker. I hope, I really, really hope uh, you were able to understand it and make sense of it because it's Really, really useful thing to know. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Leave any comments or suggestions below, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. See you guys.